Live Free Church, we're empowering people to live a life of freedom through Jesus Christ. So, get ready to hear a life-changing and life-empowering message from Pastor Terrell Taylor. Well, I want to say again, good morning today uh, to all of the Live Free family here and online. And, and today we're concluding our series on kingdom stewardship. Have you all been blessed during these last few weeks with this series? Have you been blessed? Amen. Well, again, I, I wanted to uh, begin this year to focus on, uh, to focus us on uh, the, the right understanding of stewardship, uh, which is the reasonable planning and management of our time. Everybody say our time, our talent, and our treasures. And so today, I'm going to talk about the benefits of kingdom stewardship. Everybody say the benefits of kingdom stewardship. Come on, say it again. The benefits of kingdom stewardship. Now, many of us have reward programs, right, uh, with airline companies, credit card companies, grocery stores, and, and even retail stores. And my favorite in the Taylor household is the Old Navy credit card. Now, the Old Navy credit card, we do pay off every month, so we don't have to pay interest on the 25% that they would charge me. That's way too high. So we pay it off every month. But what happens is we get, uh, we get points and we get rewards, right? And, and, and so I, I think, you know, my whole family, our whole wardrobe is Old Navy. Because we like to use it. We get points, and I mean, it pays off. Kids got to go back to school. Oh, let's lose, use the points. Hey, man. We're not paying for it. It's free. Everybody likes free stuff, right? And, and so we get to get free stuff, and we love it. Now, reward programs are, are, are also designed to, to get us more miles so you can fly more, right? You get more points so you can redeem them to get, everybody say, more. And so it is with the benefits of being a kingdom steward. Perhaps you didn't realize that God has a reward program as well. And God's reward program is better than anything that man could ever dream of. When you are a faithful steward uh, of God's stuff, guess what? You will get the rewards and benefits that come when you serve God. You will get more. Amen? Just like the faithful stewards in Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 14 through 30, the Lord said to them, well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful over a little, and I will set you over more. I know somebody said much, but I, I gave it a different translation. He's going to set you over more. And so the Lord's reward program has everything to do with how much of heaven you get to experience on earth as well as your kingdom inheritance when you get to glory. Put that on the screen. The Lord's reward program, right, has everything to do with how much what? Heaven you get to experience on earth. And, and as well as your kingdom inheritance when you get to glory. See, God wants to bless you when you're here, and God wants to bless you when you get to glory. How many know that this is just the, the practice for the, the, the big event that is coming? Amen. And so listen, God wants you to maximize your potential on earth while he increases his engagement with your life. In fact, God has laid out uh, five specific incentives for you to aim for as you manage the time, talents, and treasures he's placed within your realm of kingdom stewardship. Now, these five potential rewards do not come to believers simply because they are Christians. You don't get these rewards simply because you are a Christian. It's only when you, as a kingdom man, a kingdom woman, a kingdom steward, rightly position yourself in God's kingdom program through the choices that you make. You see, Pastor Chad made a bad choice this week. He ate two cookies on the Daniel fast. 
it was good too. See, if Pastor Chad just would have just hung in there, God would have gave him some extra rewards and glory, but he, he, he ate his rewards on the earth. Amen. But Pastor Chad, you're not alone. I, I got to confess to you, I had some Cheetos last night. God, Lord Jesus, help me, help me. But I want to tell you, I've been fasting for 21. I started a week early, so I'm, I'm almost done. Amen. I'm, hallelujah, I'm almost done. But I'm going to keep going a little bit longer. But I was sitting there to tear. I said, I can't let Pastor C be by himself. Let me confess. Let me confess. Oh, our God is good. Sister Sabrina's waving her hand. Let's just have a time of confession. If, hey, just wave your hand. If, if you slipped up cookies, chips, uh, popcorn. Oh, no, popcorn's okay. All right. <laughs> you know, our God wants us to be joyful. Amen. He wants us to laugh. We're okay. Some of you, you're just too serious anyway. Amen. So let me get you back to the point. Listen, the first benefit, listen, of being a kingdom steward is answers to prayer. The first benefit of being a kingdom steward is answers to prayer. Now, when we uphold our end of managing God's resources according to our commitment to him, he responds with greater involvement in our prayer life. When you treat God as the owner of everything that you have, right? right while you act as the manager or the steward, he is much more open to your prayer request. <laughs> 1 John 3 and 22 couldn't state it more clearly. Let's turn there, and, and I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version. I like the translation of, of what I'm talking about today. So I'm in the NKJV, and it says this, And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his what? Commandments, and do those things that are what? Pleasing in his sight. Wow. You know, volumes have been written on how to get your prayers answered. But 1 John 3, 22 sums it up in one sentence. He says what? Manage what God has given to you according to his will and his commandments. And you will get your prayers answered answered you know when you operate in the mindset of pleasing God with your decisions then you can ask him whatever you want in your prayers and guess what he will answer you why because you're walking in his will you are walking in alignment with who he is but when we disregard God as the owner of all that is in uh, our life. When you disregard as the owner all that is in your life, listen, don't expect him to respond to your requests. Many Christians don't get their prayers answered because they are approaching God with the wrong mindset, with the wrong mentality. They are approaching God as if they are in control and as if they own their own lives. When you go to God with that mindset, all you are doing is asking him to bless you for you. But God desires to bless you not only for you, but also for the good of others. And God desires to bless you for his glory. He desires to bless you for his honor. Why? Because he owns everything. He has a plan for you. He has a destiny for you, and he's designed for you to live it out. Listen, not one of us in this room or watching online is an accident. Maybe you were unplanned by your parents, but you're not an accident. <laughs> God sent you here on purpose for a purpose. But in order to fulfill that destiny, you have to align your life underneath his supreme rule as you cultivate an intimate relationship with him. Then when you abide in him and, and you abide in his will, he will give you whatever you ask for in Jesus' name. Why? Because when you treat God as the owner and you recognize that you are only a steward, he is much more interested in the conversation. Amen? 
You know, I, I looked to one of my sons the other day. You know, you probably guess which one it is. There's only three, and one of them's on his own. There's only two more at the house. I said, son, when you going to get out of my pocket? When you going to get out of my pocket? When you going to get out of my pocket? I was just messing with him. But what I was saying is, listen, I'm daddy. I'm the owner of this house. You know, I'm actually the steward, but and, and, and I'm just trying to help you understand. If, 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 if I'm God, I'm, I own the house, amen. I own the room that you stay in and you don't pick the clothes up in. I, I own the bathroom that when I come in, I have to say, oh, you need to come clean. I own it all. Why? Because I'm paying the mortgage along with my wife, amen. But he gets to live in the house. He gets some benefits. He don't have to pay rent. Amen. He don't have to buy the food. He's like, I'm just hanging with daddy. And that's the same mentality. Listen, God, our father, owns everything. But we get to hang out with daddy, amen, with father God, Abba, father, papa. He is the one, and he's trying to get us to understand that there are benefits to serving him and loving him, amen, and obeying him. The second benefit of being a kingdom steward is the fulfillment of God's promise, listen, to meet your need. Pastor Lou was almost preaching it in the, in, in the, in the offering message. When you are a kingdom steward, listen, God promises to meet your need. Now, I didn't say that God promised to meet your every want, but he did promise to meet your every need. Let's be clear on this. God's promise is contingent on you operating as a cheerful and generous steward. You understand that all you possess is his when you understand that. Listen, and you understand that when you, what you possess is his and, and you understand that what you have should be used to advance his kingdom and to bless those serving as stewards with you in the kingdom, then you have a true kingdom steward mindset. You're more generous. You're giving. Philippians 4 and 19, what? We, we, we all know this. In the New King James, it says, And my God shall what? Supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Wow, I'm glad my daddy got riches. My daddy is the man. He owns the cattle on the thousand hills. Woo! And so listen, when people often, uh, what people often fail to do is read the, the previous four verses. <laughs> Where Paul thanks the, the, the Philippian people. He, he thanks them for giving abundantly in order to help him and to help others. Listen, the Philippian church and congregation, they were generous people. And because of their generosity and because they had functioned as kingdom stewards and had given to God's kingdom agenda, the Apostle Paul and others serving with him, guess what? They were involved in getting the message of the gospel to people who were in need. When you're generous and, and you're a giver and you, and you give your tithes and you give offerings, amen, for the work of the kingdom and, and it goes into this ministry, we send it out around the world and we plant ch uh, churches and, and the gospel is being preached over the airways, amen, people are getting saved, healed, delivered, set free on Zoom calls. Come on, that's, that's because of your generosity. Hallelujah. And although most Christians, listen, they claim Philippians 4 and 19 for themselves, not every Christian can rightfully claim its truth. A believer can only claim the promises inherent in verse 19 if that person is also doing what is found in verses 15 through 18. And that is prioritizing God's kingdom agenda. Now, I understand that there are times when God doesn't seem to answer our prayers or even when we are obeying him. There seems to be those times when God allows trials to keep uh, coming in into our lives and it doesn't look like he is meeting our needs. Those times, though, are the exception to the rule. God does that when he is seeking to strengthen us. 
and, and develop us to go to a new spiritual level. God may leave us in a season of need because he is letting us go through a trial or a wilderness experience in order to test us or to develop us. Anybody here that have gotten out of kindergarten? You had to pass it. You had to pass it. Anybody here got, you, you went to first grade. You had to, oh, then second grade. Oh, anybody skip a grade? You know, you, but you have to go through the tests. Our God is no different. But again, those situations are the exception to the rule. When we fully live our lives as kingdom men and women, as kingdom stewards, listen, God will come through for us as he has promised in Philippians 4 and 19. He has promised to meet all our need. That word there, need, in, in the Greek, it means this, what is needed, and it also means a lack. <laughs> and, and so listen, God is interested in giving us what we need in our area of lack. Anybody lack some things in here today? I know I have. I lack some hair. Amen. But God is interested in giving us what we need in our area of lack. He is committed to blessing us according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That means he is fully and well capable of taking care of his sons and his daughters. That's the kind of God we serve. Listen, my children, they don't go to bed at night worrying if they're going to have food or worrying if they're going to have clothes or worrying if they're going to have a roof over their head. No. They go to bed and wake up just the same way, like, whoa, I'm still in this warm house. Amen. They don't see a bill. <laughs> they don't give any kind of input for the bills. Come on. They just sons in my house. And that's the same with us. We're sons and daughters in the father's house. And he is going to take care of his own. Amen. And so here we're, we're going through the five and we're on the third. Listen, the third benefit of being a kingdom steward is this. I love this divine guidance. Everybody say divine guidance. The third benefit of being a kingdom steward is divine guidance. And oh, how we need divine guidance like we've never needed it before with all the options and opportunities and opposition that exists in the world uh, today in the world of our work or our career and investment options and and business options you know what divine guidance leads us through the overabundance of these options and it leads us to the best possible decision God wants to lead us to the best possible decisions for our life you know options I know we're here in America and we're in the land of the free but you know having all these options is not always a good thing in some countries if they were on a 21 day fast they wouldn't have the option to eat cookies or Cheetos or Fritos options are not always good but Isaiah 48 and 17, it says this in the New King James. It, it says what? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, what? Your God, who teaches you to profit. Some of y'all about to walk out the door. Oh, Pastor, is this, is this a, a prosperity message? No, come on, we're going to stay in the Word. Is that okay? I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Isaiah 48 and 17. God literally says that when you pay attention to him and let him be the Lord over your life and let him be the Lord your God, meaning that what? He is in charge. He will teach you, guess what? He will teach you how to profit. The word there in the Hebrew for, pop, for profit, y'all, it means this, to have value. It means to benefit. It means to gain in some.
some way to succeed, to accomplish or fulfill something. Anybody just feel good when you accomplish something? It feel, makes you feel good, right? Well, that word, that's what that word there means. Listen, God will teach you how to increase what you have. I tell you, I thank God I'm not making the same amount of money that I made when I started out in ministry. Hallelujah. God has taught me how to profit, how to increase. I got my education and, and I got hired at churches because they saw the value of the investment that I had placed in my life. The Lord was leading me from glory to glory. When I was out of church, they didn't want to give me a raise. I went to another church and got more glory. Hallelujah. Come on. For some of y'all that didn't get that, it means I got more cash. But God wants to teach you how to increase what you have. He doesn't mind you making a profit. God expects you and me to expand what he has placed under our influence and our authority. He wants us to profit as he leads us in the way that we should go. That's the key. You've got to be led. Because whatever sometimes what you think is increase is not really going to be an increase is going to cause a decrease in your life. So you've got to be led. Amen. When you make decisions as a kingdom steward, the Lord gives you wisdom and guides you on how to experience an increase, whether in your work, in your interests, in your business or whatever it is you put your hands to do. Now, he can't increase you if you ain't doing nothing. God is not going to increase laziness. You got work to do. You were placed in this earth to do something. And so whatever you put your hands to do, listen, God wants to bless you in it. He shows you the way to go that will lead to increase. Everybody say increase. Now, I know uh, the prosperity message has messed a lot of people up. But this is not what it is. This is biblical prosperity. We're talking about being a kingdom steward, right? We don't own anything. We're just stewarding what God has put in our hands. And so now sometimes, listen, you may have to go through some hills. You may have to go through some valleys and face your own insecurities. And you might have to fight battles that seem to never end. But guess what? God teaching you something in those seasons of your life he's equipping you to handle the increase that is coming so listen don't ever give up don't give up on your purpose don't give up on the dreams God has placed in your life don't give up amen we have a, a single mom in in our church and she went back to school to get nursing degree and man I'm so proud of her because we, even though she's a single mom she went back to school to accomplish the purpose that God had placed in her life and I am so proud of her hallelujah I'm so proud of you so proud of you. God wants to do things in our life, but guess what? We got to get up. <laughs> we got to get moving. We got to cut off TV and social media and, and, and things that are distracting us from developing ourselves. Imagine if Joseph, imagine if Joseph would have given up when he was thrown into the pit framed in Potiphar's house and forgotten in prison, then he would have never experienced the increase of being Pharaoh's right-hand man in Egypt. Joseph never stopped allowing God to teach him how to profit. Whatever season he found himself in, he always used his skill set and God's guidance to benefit those around him. He went to Potiphar's house, and Potiphar said, man, you've got straight-up admin skills. Take over everything. And then Potiphar's wife came after him, and Joseph said, yep, I'm over everything. But he said, I can't touch you. I don't want you anyway. Joseph ran, found himself in the prison, 
guess what the prison guard does? He puts Joseph in charge of everybody. Tells the baker, don't forget him. Tells the, the other man, don't forget him. And the baker forgets him. The cup, I mean, the baker got killed, but, but the, the cup bearer forgot him. And then he, he remembered two years later that Joseph had interpreted his dreams. And guess what? They, they brought Joseph up to Pharaoh. Woo! He interprets Pharaoh's dream and tells him there's going to be seven years of famine and there's going to be seven good years and then seven lean years. Pharaoh is so impressed. He said, Joseph, take over the whole land. You have control over everything. There's no one greater than you besides myself. Wow. And let me tell you, Joseph was a businessman. He was handling business. He, he was selling grain, and eventually the famine went so long, people had to sell themselves. <laughs> they sold all their land. They sold themselves. They're like, we, Egypt owns us. And then Jacob said, okay, well, 20% tax on everything you get after that. And I mean, Joseph was running stuff, y'all. It was amazing how God used him in that situation. And guess what? He will do the same for you. He wants to bless you so that you can bless those around your area of influence. So listen, keep working, keep serving, keep growing, and allowing God to lead you in the way that he has designed for your life. I am not a professional athlete. <laughs> I like to watch sports, but I am a pastor. So listen, I'm not going to get caught up in what professional athletes make. I'm not going to get caught up in what doctors make. And Lord, listen, I'm just going to be on assignment. And guess what? God is going to take care of me as long as I have the mindset that I am doing what he's called me to do. Amen? I can barely coach a basketball team. We're 0-3. Y'all pray for your pastor on Saturdays. If Saturdays around four or five, six, just, just intercede because folks be working me on Saturdays. I have to, you know what? This is just confession time, Pastor Chad. I got one more confession. So we're playing yesterday and I only have five players because two of them decide not to show up. And when you play a whole game, man, you get tired. But we were up, we were up on, on, at halftime, and my boys were fighting and battling. We went on an 11 to 2 run at one point in the game, and then they just got tired. The other team just started rolling on us, and I'm like, oh, man. And then here, here it is, you know, and they just scored 10 points in like one minute because they were getting every rebound and just putting it back up. My kids are tired. And then there was like five seconds left. They get the ball to their best play. We're already down by like 12 points. And then he shoots a three at the buzzer, and it goes in. Their whole team jumps up screaming and yelling, and I was like, oh, no, they didn't. That is disrespectful. And your pastor yelled. Your pastor didn't cuss, though. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is what your pastor did. We only had five players. You didn't do nothing. We only had five players. What y'all jumping up for? Ah, uh, so Tara, little Tara. Um, Terrell, you know, how do you think that, you know, you, you really did, you really didn't do well at the time. Tara, you are not a coach of 11 and 12 year olds. <sighs> okay, I feel so much better. I think I'm ready to preach now. I've confessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, it's real out there. It's real out there. But listen, we have benefits, right? We have benefits to serving God. And the fourth benefit of being a kingdom steward is this, emotional stability. Maybe that I just should have just, just had this, my notes when I was playing basketball. I might have had some emotional stability yesterday. Amen. <laughs> but the fourth benefit of being a kingdom steward is emotional stability. Listen, stress, right, and worry, it cripples millions of people every day. We worry about money. We worry about health and family and, and crime and countless other things. We become like a dinosaur with an anxiety disorder. We become a nervous wreck. 
Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to slip one in because y'all be hating on my jokes. I just had to slip one in on you. Some of y'all that get that really nervous Rex. Uh, okay. <laughs> Listen, though, we find so much fear, right? We find so much to fear in this world, and, and, and the enemy loves nothing more than to see God's precious children li living panic-stricken lives. It comes in different shapes and sizes. It, it, it might look like depression or frustration or anger or even violence. Listen, all of these emotions show up, and in response to them, we sometimes even over-medicate ourselves. According to Newsweek, Americans are taking 34% more anxiety meds since the coronavirus pandemic started. 35%, 34% increase. Listen, that, that's a lot of worry going on right now, right? But what's worry? What, what, what is worry? What, worry is, it's more than concern. You know, it, it, worry is concern gone wild. <laughs> That's what worry is. It, it's like a rocking chair. It'll get you started, but it won't take you anywhere. But listen, family, the reason why worry, it, it, it's a sin, is because worry is doubting the power and goodness of God our Father. Some people don't like to call worry a sin. They, they say they are just concerned about something. However, there is a dividing line that distinguishes legitimate concern from illegitimate worry. Worry controls you. It becomes an interest paid on a trouble before it's even due. Most of the things people worry about, listen, they rarely happen anyway. The real problem for most people is how to stop worrying in difficult situations, right? When the rent is due or the bank account is low and, or, and the family demands are greater than the supply. Uh, worry can become an all-consuming state of mind. But Jesus gives us some encouraging words. How many love Jesus? And what he has to say. Look at Luke 12 chapter. And I'm going to read this in the NIV. But we're going to look at verses 22 through 26. It says in Luke 12. Then Jesus said to his disciples. And we can apply it to us today. Therefore I tell you what. Do not worry. About your life. What you will eat. Oh, about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable, valuable you are than birds. And who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? What God wants us to remember is that when we live our lives according to his spiritual principles, we do not have to worry. He is our faithful father and we are of infinite value to him. Sometimes people worry because they really don't understand how much they mean to their heavenly father. Some of you, you've been raised in homes with an abusive father. Some of you might have been raised in a home with even without your father. Some of you have been raised in situations where fathers are not what our father God is. And so we go through life not understanding what a true father should be. But I'm here to tell you, listen, if that is you, you have a heavenly father that will love you. You have a heavenly father that will never abuse you. You have a heavenly father that will protect you. You have a heavenly father that values who you are. Walk in that. Walk in understanding the value of who you are. Because God will supply. 
You know, I don't know how God will solve every one of your problems or, or fix all your concerns, but I can guarantee you that if you commit to living your life for him fully as a kingdom steward, listen, managing what he has given you to manage according to his will, according to his ways, he will take care of you. No need to worry. Somebody say there's no need to worry. Come on, say it again. There's no need to worry. Hallelujah. We have a God who loves us. We have a God that we, we, we are valuable in his sight. You know, the, the amount of money in your bank doesn't uh, determine your value. Your degrees don't determine your value or maybe non-degrees, huh? Your ethnicity doesn't determine your value. Where you were born doesn't determine your value. What determines your value is if you are a son or daughter of the Most High. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a rugged cross. 39 lashes, bleeding to death on his way to the cross. Six hours on a cross suffering the most horrific pain anybody can ever imagine. He did it all for you. Why? Because you're valuable. Never let the enemy lie to you that you have no value. Never allow the spirit of suicide to, to come upon you and say you have no value. Never allow anyone to speak into your life that you are nothing. Hallelujah. You have great worth. You have a season that you're here. So listen, know your value. Get to work and get to being a blessing. Amen. My last point is this. The fifth benefit of being a kingdom steward is experiencing divine reversals. Write that down. The fifth benefit is experiencing divine reversals. Reversals. I needed a divine reversal yesterday when my team lost. I needed a divine, I needed something, amen. But God's going to do things, Why? Right? There are times, listen, when God turns things around in your life for your good. Malachi 3 and 11, it says this, And I will what? Rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says who? The Lord of hosts. Listen, when God says something, you just might as well just cast the check. <laughs> he says he's going to rebuke the devourer. The devourer is someone who seeks to rip off your blessing. A devourer is someone who seeks to rip the blessings of God from your life. They want to eat up your produce or your production. Listen, Satan is the foremost devourer, and he uses people and situations to go about his plan in your life. He uses people. Anybody just has somebody in their life, they just seem like they were Satan incarnate. <laughs> Anybody have situations come up in your life and you just said, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but you must have a plan. It seems like the devourer is just trying to take me out. But we are told of God's response to the devourer. In John 10 and 10, Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you might have life and have it more what? Abundantly. Wow, that's who we serve. Our king wants us to have not only life, but to have it in abundance. That's why kingdom people, listen, we should have a total different response to what is going on around us. In my Torah studies the other day, I was reading and how the famine affected that whole region. And guess what? It not only affected Egypt, but it affected Canaan. And, and, and Jacob, who was a man of God, he was yet affected by the famine. Listen, just because we're believers doesn't mean we're not affected by this pandemic. 
Believers have died. Believers have gotten sick. My family, we were the first fruits of the virus in our church. Listen, it affects us, but guess what? We are not to carry the worry of it with us. Hallelujah. We have to have a different response to everything that's going on. And listen, Paul, uh, Paul said this, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So kingdom people, even in the midst of a pandemic, we walk in righteousness. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Kingdom people have peace. We walk in righteousness, we have peace, and we experience joy. Woo! I don't care if it's a pandemic, a, a, a famine, a man, a collapse of the economy, a change of a presidential administration. Listen, whatever is going on in our life, we have to maintain kingdom focus. The last time I heard, Trump wasn't my savior. The last time I read, Joe Biden is not my savior. The last time I read, who's ever the next president after that is not my savior. I serve one king, and that is Jesus Christ alone. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I'm a kingdom man. Hallelujah. And so the church, we have to wake up. We can't be so involved with everything. Amen. The Bible says many people get entangled in the cares of this world. Listen, CNN ain't going to do nothing for you but stir up more conflict and worry. Fox is not going to do more, too much for you but, but stir up more conflict and worry and concern. The world is falling in. Oh! CNN plays, 450,000 people have died of the virus. Ah! Listen, if you're a believer, I pray that God would help you deal with the concern of even dying. Because listen, when you die as a believer, it's just a transition <laughs> into the presence of God. Now, folks left behind might cry for a while. But listen, you ain't going to be worried because you're going to be in the presence of God. Death itself. It's just a tool when you are a kingdom man or woman of God. Well, pastor, I, I understand that, but I just, I'm fearful. Listen, I want to pray for you. Don't be afraid of dying. Don't be afraid of sickness. Don't be afraid of the collapse of the economy. Listen, God's got us. This is not our home. Amen. There's a day coming when Jesus is going to return and he's going to reign on this earth for a thousand years. Amen. Jews call it the day that is all Shabbat. <laughs> Woo! The Sabbath day is coming, the 7,000 year of this earth. Jesus is coming soon. So don't get caught up. Listen, focus on who you are called to be. Focus on your assignment. Get out of God, anoint you, and bless you to continue being a blessing to those around you. You can't control too many things anyway. So why get all concerned and, and worried? Because Jesus is the one who has positioned uh, us to be what? People who experience abundant life. Hallelujah. And when Jesus is positioned as Lord of your life, God can introduce a divine, listen, reversal. Somebody say a divine reversal. When, when Jesus is the Lord, listen, we can experience a divine reversal of Satan's plan of attack. Uh, I guess you, uh, in case you didn't know, Satan is just the creation of God. He's not the creator. Most people think, listen, stewardship has to, to do merely with how a person manages his or her money. While that is an important aspect of stewardship, it is only one aspect. Living as a kingdom steward is an all-inclusive awareness and perspective that all you have been given is, is by God. And he wants you to use it for his glory. Listen, your time, your talent, your treasures belong to him. Yet because we fail to realize this and, and sometimes we, we, we take it into account, you know, uh, that, that we are in control. Listen, Satan, he, he'll continue to rip us off. 
There are many, there are so many believers who are living lives of loss due to what the enemy has stolen from them. Maybe he has stolen your hope. Maybe he has stolen your dreams. Maybe he has stolen even your time. Maybe he has stolen your peace and your provisions. Maybe he has stolen your health. Perhaps he has twisted your thinking in such a way that now you are living in perpetual debt and just trying to break even every month. Listen, whatever the devil has stolen from you, if you will only discover the secret of aligning yourself to the will and the purposes of God, you will see God turn things around in your life. You will witness a reversal of fortune when God rebukes the devourer and commands him to leave you alone. <laughs> Come on, somebody say, I'm going to experience a divine reversal. Come on. Say, say, I'm going to experience a divine reversal. And then say this, I'm going to walk in alignment with God. I'm going to walk in alignment with God. That's the key, family. You've got to align your choices, your actions, your thoughts, your words with God's will for your life. And here's my last takeaway is this. Live this life. And I want you to hear this. Live this life in light of the life of that is to come. Live this life in the light of the life that is to come. Remember that the more you have been given, the more God is expecting from you. Much is required from those who have been given much, for their responsibility is greater. But don't forget that a kingdom steward, a kingdom a son, a kingdom daughter. Listen, you have benefits in this life to help you maximize your purpose and full potential in the earth. Let's give God a hand praise today. Amen. Come on, are you blessed today? Come on, you've got some benefits. Amen. Woo. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, as kingdom stewards. Lord, we understand that you answer our prayers as a benefit, Lord. You fulfill your promises to meet our needs. Lord, you give us divine guidance and emotional stability. And Lord, we even can experience divine reversals in our life. And so we thank you that we are going to walk in alignment with you. We're going to walk in obedience with you, uh, uh, to you and for you. We're going to live our lives in a way that pleases you the most. We might not be able to please everybody, but Lord, we want to always please you. Everybody's not trying to live for you or, 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 or make choices and decisions that honor you. But God, as a son, as a daughter, as a steward, Lord, of what you've blessed me with, Lord, may I, may this family, may, may our church go to the next level, Lord, in our stewardship. May we use our time wisely each and every day, God. Lord, may we give of our talents and, and our skills, Lord, to others so that we can bless them and serve them. Lord, may we honor you with our treasure the finances that you've blessed us with. Lord, we just, we want to continue to be a blessing to others, a blessing to your kingdom. We are only stewards. And so God, my prayer for this family, this church is that we would steward well, that homes would steward well their homes, Lord, that businesses would steward well their business, that, Lord, employees would be good employees and steward well their jobs and the function and the roles that they have. We want to steward well, God, because we want to honor you. We want to bless you. You've given us everything you had. You gave us your son, Jesus Christ. And I want to say, if you're watching today or even in the building, you've never given your life to Jesus. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to, uh, to raise your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus today. And maybe you're online watching. You've never made that commitment to Jesus. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Now, again, the, the power is not in the prayer. The power is in your confession 
and in your heart, confessing Jesus with your mouth, believing in your heart that he was raised from the dead. And Paul wrote for us uh, in Romans 9 and 10, you shall be saved. You shall be delivered. And so I'm going to say a prayer. Uh, and, and just if you're here today, just say it uh, after me. And, and it's just, uh, just so that we can just say it together as a family. Say, Father God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be born in a manger, to live among us as a man, and to die on the cross for my sins. I confess my sin today. I am a sinner, and I am in need of grace. Lord, please save me by the cleansing and the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ. I not only believe that he died, but I believe that he was, he was raised from the dead. I believe now he has ascended to the Father, seated on the right hand, and that he's coming back again. I thank you. I am now saved. I am made whole. I am washed. I am cleansed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's give God a hand praise, amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Praise God. Praise God. And I just want us all to stand. We're going to dismiss in a moment. But, you know, we're, this is the conclusion of this series. And I just want you to take that step as we all stand. Just take that step. This year, let this be a year where you are walking in the stewardship responsibility that you've been given. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, God, for this series. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we are going to be kingdom stewards with a whole different mindset on how we approach life. We own nothing. You own nothing. My prayer is, God, that we would steward and manage well with the years that we have left on this earth. May we manage well. God, we give you back our time. God, the things that are robbing us of, of time, Lord, and, and things that are robbing us of our time even spent with you, God, we dedicate our time afresh to you. Just lift those hands and just, just begin to bless him. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, Lord, not only our time, but our talents. Lord, we just dedicate our talents back to you. Whatever it is, God, we want to serve others in a way that is pleasing unto you. Whether it's a nurse, whether it's a teacher, Lord, whether it's a business owner, whether it's an employee, Lord, of, of, of a ministry, God, we want to do it well. Maybe you're even retired. Listen, you still got work to do. Hallelujah. And may we serve others well. And Lord, also our treasures. Lord, we give our treasures back to you. God, we own nothing. Every paycheck that comes in, God, it, it's because you are blessing us. And, Lord, you've only asked for us to give 10% of it back to you, Lord, so that your kingdom would be advanced. And so, God, if, the, if there are people that are struggling with this uh, idea or this, this principle and this revelation of tithing, Lord, my prayer is that you would help them overcome the fear, overcome the, 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 the wrong teaching or the mindsets and the lies that they've been fed. Lord, we want to be people who are generous. We want to give away 10% of our income, Lord, in however way that you design that to be. Lord, whether it's, it's, it's a church or, or ministries or, or charity, God, we just want to make sure we're giving that portion away from ourselves. And you're going to continue to bless us. And I thank you, God, that we are not people who think that we own it. <laughs> 
Lord, some people have lost jobs in this pandemic, and God, you've made a way. Some people have, their hours have been cut, but God, you've made a way. Lord, our, we're not relying on resources. We're relying on the source, and that is you. We thank you for stimulus. We thank you for whatever that's come through our hands. But, God, we continue to look to the big G and not the small G. (laughs) Not the small G of government. We look to the big G of God. We thank you for our government and the things that they want to do and they're doing. But, God, amen, you are our source. So help us as kingdom people have that mindset when it comes to our treasure. We give it back to you. And God, I thank you for increase in this church. I thank you for increase in businesses. I thank you for profit and increase in families. I thank you, Lord, for increase in the lives of your people. Hallelujah. If that's you here today, you just give God, just begin to thank him for increase in your life. Begin to praise him and thank him for opportunities that are opening and doors that are opening. Some of you, there's been doors that have been shut. But listen, God is going to open a door for you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to bless you. Why? Because he loves you and you are of a value to him. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the profit. Thank you for the increase. Thank you for the blessings. And we will be content with whatever you bless us with. Amen. How many know that I love you? How many know that God loves you more? And when you take his word and you apply it in your life, you are going to get results. You are going to produce. Amen. We serve an omnipotent God. We call it omnipotent. (laughs) Woo! Our God produces. Amen. I know you got masks on. Don't high five. Just look across the aisle. Say, God is going to produce in your life. Just look across the aisle. God said, God is going to produce in your life. Come on. Speak it over him. Say, God is going to produce in your life. Amen. And you at home, God is going to produce in your life. Well, I love you, church family. Thank you for being with us here today and online. And you all know we we exist for five reasons. You all know the vision. We're empowering people to live a life of freedom through Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want you to join us next Sunday. Uh, Minister Jelana Walsh has a word for us, and it's going to be a a creative word. Amen. And, And preaching. How many are blessed by her ministry? Amen. I know I love it. She can lead worship. She prophesies. Amen. She has a husband who eats cookies on a fast. She's blessed. She's blessed. She's blessed. Amen. So tune in next week, and we're going to be here the same time, same place, if if it be the Lord's will. God bless you. Love you, family. See you next week. We hope you enjoyed today's message and pray that you experience the freedom God has for you through His Son, Jesus Christ. John chapter 8, verse 36 says, If the Son gives you freedom, you are free. If you would like more information about Live Free Church, please visit us on the web at www.livefreechurch.org.